My name is Mark Bernard, and I want to draw a metaphor between the mythology of current literature and movies to the situation in Russia. Now, normally Joseph Campbell would be drawing on classical uh, stories of myths of good versus evil. And I like to call it by name because a lot of people don't want to say it. But Russia in this current despotic state is evil. And there's a struggle. Zelensky said it's light versus darkness. And that is true. And you have to remember that light always wins over darkness. Go back to the mythology of all mankind. It's very hopeful. And three myths that we have in current literature, I can treat it fairly superficially, at least in this video, and maybe I'll follow through with others, is we have The Hunger Games, Star Wars, and Lord of the Rings. Which one do you think is most applicable to the current struggle in Russia right now? For me personally, let's take a look at them. Hunger Games is an economic story. You've got Pan Am, the capital, like St. Petersburg, and Moscow, Moscow perhaps Pan Am, and St. Petersburg being District 1, and then the far-flung regions being the 12, thir really 13 districts of, the, of uh, Pan, Pan Am and the, and the country. It's an economic struggle and class struggle because all the benefit and all the wealth, all the aggregated GDP numbers are in this one capital city. And the oligarchs achieve and the boyers, uh, you know, just suck the wealth out of everything else and everybody else. And it's very unfortunate. And yes, the metaphor of the Hunger Games is kind of like the Eastern Front, and that's we can weave something into that. That's the first metaphor. The second metaphor is Star Wars. Star Wars is clearly light versus darkness, and Mark Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker, is a big supporter of Ukraine. So you can look that up. He's got a Twitter account, pretty active. And... Or you can just look him up online. He even has like a drone site. These are the drones you're looking for. So what is this good versus evil? Does evil win? And this is the answer. Evil has its hour. Often in these horror movies, these demonic forces are saying something like, This is my hour. So evil always has its hour. But then good wins. Good is much stronger than evil, even though it doesn't seem it. Look at Anakin Skywalker compared to Darth Vader. The force is much greater in Anakin Skywalker than it was in Darth Vader. And so many people follow the dark side because in the words of Obi-Wan Kenobi, the force has a strong influence on the weak-minded. But you're not going to win on the dark side. Look at Joseph, read Joseph Campbell's Power of Myth. Good always wins over evil. The last metaphor is perhaps one of the best. It's Lord of the Rings. And it's this, this Mordor and this dark forest, really Sauron, almost unnamed, mysterious dark force that the whole world is starting to unite and fight against. Now, J.R.R. Tolkien was not specifically think of, of Germany at the time in the 1940s because he wanted to let this be a timeless metaphor for power corrupting humans. And that's what has happened in Russia. The problem is, and I think why I think this is a good metaphor with the orcs and the elves and the hobbits, I think, and it's very apropos that I'm kind of like in this mystical forest here. The problem with confronting evil and battling evil, like Frodo felt, he often felt just empty. He didn't feel like this Hollywood great joy of victory and let's all go and celebrate and recant tales. You're just hollowed out by this evil because it's like a void. And I think it represents, uh, and it's just as like a sucking of life out of you. And, and so I think that represents the struggle also from another aspect, very good. But ultimately, good wins over evil in every single ancient and modern mythology. And for you to say that this current despotism and tyranny is not evil in Russia, I would really question that claim. It's, it's one of the most clearest metaphors of light versus darkness. And if you ever saw the movie The Exorcist, the old one, this young exorcist, he's got all these PhDs and MDs from Johns Hopkins universities, 
describing to an old exorcist who's seen the world and coming in. And he's saying, you know, I've identified three personalities in this person. And the old exorcist turns to him and says, no, there's only one. There's only one. And the old exorcist warns him, watch out. They mix lies with truths. And these are the most nasty and, and harmful lies. And that's what's happening in Russia. There, anything you turn upside down, they'll sw- flip it around. They'll say the religious people, the good people, the people that are trying to help the world are in Russia. But that's the reverse. And in the words of Obi-Wan Kenobi, the force has a strong mind on the weak-minded, strong influence. And that's what's happening in the American geopolitical landscape. They're being suckered into this belief that somehow, and I've seen, I've seen even clergy and academics, politicians, somehow this, this dark force is mixing lies with truth. And because they're weak-minded, usually it's the weak-mindedness comes from pride, because pride always comes before the fall. And, you know, you're impressed that you have these degrees or you got an award or something. They get suckered or that you're a position, a position of power or people listen to you. So they get impressed by they're helping the good guys, but they're not helping the good guys. They're under the dark force and the dark influence. So at the end of the day, light will win over darkness. And, you know, the dark, the people at the orcs or on the dark side, they will have a long time, eternity is a long time, to think about what they've done. The real reason they do it is they don't believe in anything. And as a human, I do. I believe in a complex stratification of reality. I believe in a greater reality and a greater hope. My name is Mark Biernott. Thank you very much.